What is up, everybody? Mountain Man here with a content showcase for the latest DLC for The Hunter, Call of the Wild. And that, my friends, as you probably already know, is ATVs. That's right. Uh, a lot of people have asked for this that I've seen. A lot of people have asked for either ATVs or bikes or trucks or some way to get more quickly around the map uh, when you don't have outposts unlocked. Um, there's been a little bit of controversy about it. I wasn't too sold on the other day myself. Um, I thought that it would be kind of unrealistic, but then um, I don't really use ATVs in real life. So, I mean, as far as I know, it's a, a pretty common occurrence for people to use them for hunting and whatever. Um, so, I'm going to go over the mechanics of it. I'm going to show them to you. We're going to go drive around a little bit, maybe have a little bit of fun. And with any luck, uh, you guys will like the video, and I'll be able to do more of them. So, once you get your DLC, you have it downloaded and everything, and you want to get on your ATV and blast around, wait. A couple things we need to go over first. Number one is the ATV makes a god-awful amount of noise. It makes the maximum possible amount of noise. So it's great from getting from point A to point B really quickly. Uh, it's great for unlocking all those different points of interest you never did around the map because you just couldn't be bothered to run to them. Um, but it will scare animals away in a very large radius around you. So if you are using it to get to a hunting spot that you like, so, for example, if you, um, well, let's travel up to my favorite hunting spot in the game. We'll go up here to the Willapay outpost. Alright, so here we are. We're up at Willapay. Uh, this is one of my favorite places to go hunting, if I'm honest. So, you know, say you really like to hunt down in this area here. Um, which I do, because there's really long lines of sight and everything. Um, but you don't want to walk all the way down. You can spawn your ATV, ride it down to, like, here, and then walk the rest of the way. Um, I say stop here just because if you try to drive all the way down, by the moment you get to right here... Everything in this area is going to be fucked off. They're going to go away, they're going to run, um, and you'll never see them because the thing's so loud. So you need to kind of take that into account because um, otherwise it's exactly what's going to happen. Um, you can scare all the everything away very quickly. So when you're ready to get your ATV, when you're ready to drive around like a fool, just go to your nearest outpost or tent, go to your cache, Access it, go down the garage, and there they are, in all of their glory. Come in three different colors, jade, crimson, and charcoal. We'll pull each of them out so you can take a look at them. Um, they all have top speed of 50, handling of 50, durability of 50. Uh, unless they add more things to the game that have different stats than this, all of these have the same stats, so this is kind of superfluous, if you ask me. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand the point of this. Um... Vehicle status, condition, uh, this will show you what the status of the vehicle is, uh, i.e. how much health it has, we'll go over that in a little bit, um, and that way you can kind of tell, oh, this thing's only got 10 health left, so um, it may be worthwhile just to recall the thing and recover it rather than just running out to use it. Um, the Sabre 4x4 combines a stunning ability to traverse rough terrain with unmatched comfort and style. Enter the heated seat and experience the off-road rush as it takes you across fields, bogs, and hills at consistent speeds. Uh, the thing is actually pretty quick. So, uh, let's get it out. We'll take a look at it. We'll start with Jade first. So, all you got to do is click on which one you want. So, click on Jade. Click on Request. Your vehicle has arrived. Turn around. And it's waiting there. Waiting for you patiently. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Now, as I said before, I don't really ride ATVs. The last time I was on an ATV, I was 10, so 23 years ago. Um, so I don't know if they were super accurate with the model. That being said, um, they actually did a really good job with this model. 
I, I think they, they modeled it really well. It's textured really well. You know, when it rains, look at that. You got the raindrops on the tire. You can see the little wet mud and everything. That's really nice. Really nice touches. All the dirt on the inside of the fender well. Um, footprints in the foot well here. Yeah. I mean, it's just a... Just a really nice job. All the detail on everything. It's nice. So, anyway. A couple controls for it. It's very, very simple to drive when you want to drive it. Head up to it, E. And there you go. You're on it. Isn't that nice? First person, if you want to swap to a third person and back and forth, you got, just got to hit C. There you go. Now you're in third person. I find it really hard to drive this thing in third person, but that could just be me. Um, you also have spacebar as your brake, uh, and it also functions like a handbrake, so you can do some pretty slick slides on it, too. Um, if you are driving in the dark, L, just like your headlamp, turns the headlights on and off. Kind of nice. Uh, forward is W, back is S, left and right turning are A and D by default. Um, I think it's just off of your movement keys, or if your movement keys have been remapped, um, like mine, I have A, E, R, G for my movement keys instead of W, A, S, D. It's mapped to those. Um, that's basically it. That's all the controls for it. It's pretty simple to drive. So the moment you start moving, she starts up with a dull throaty roar, and you can start driving it around. Now, it will coast if you let off of the gas. It does have momentum. Um, it will lose momentum faster going up hills. It will also gain momentum going down hills, whether you have the gas on or not. So yeah, uh, it works really well. It feels really tight. The steering is nice. Um, the braking, if you need to stop, you stop on a dime, give you 90 cents change. And it's just nice. It just feels good. Uh, you can get going along in a pretty decent clip in this thing. Uh, they gave you a speedometer. I'm not really sure why. I don't really need to know how fast I'm going. And if I remember correctly, it could be different now. But previous experience, ATVs don't have speedometers because you're not driving them on the road. You don't need to constrain yourself to the speed limit. Um, but, again, I could be wrong. It could be different now. Uh, the thing will get squirrely on you sometimes if you're not careful. The back end will start to step out. It's easy enough to correct and, honestly, I think it gives a little bit of extra realism. Um, you have a blue health bar underneath your speedometer. You can take damage if you run into things. So if you run into a tree, see a little bit of damage, a little bit of health off, I should say. And as you can see, it is causing a god awful amount of noise. It also inexplicably ups your heart rate, presumably because of the thrill, um, because you are bombing through the forest moon of Endor on your ATV. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind as well. You know, you can't just drive up to a herd of animals, dive off of it, get your gun out, and start shooting. Oh, by the way, it will continue going after you jump off of it, if you are moving, if you don't come to a complete stop. It will eventually slide to a stop, though. Hmm. You see? So, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I think it's it's a really handy addition to the game. Um, you know, it's not groundbreaking. It doesn't give you an advantage over other players, but it just works really well. So, you know, if you like I said, if you if you've been around the map and you've gotten all the outposts, but you just didn't have time to get all those pesky little uh, points of interest, the hunting stands, and everything, this is great for that. Absolutely great for it. Um, you can't go through trees, obviously. Um, you know, trees like these are going to stop you pretty damn quickly. Um, of course, you 
course there's not there's one right there. Trees like this will stop you. I think you should be able to drive over the desert tonight. Um, but all this little brush, that's not going to hurt you any. You can drive in water to a certain extent. Yeah, there you go. There's the back end. Get that on you. Yeah. Get frisky. Whoa. Alright, let's find some water and I'll show you. You can go deeper in water with this than you could on what I remember correctly. Not by much, but enough. Maybe going near water. Yeah. Yeah, when you're not on the roads, the back end of this thing can kick out on you really easy. I think it's fine. here at the water. See, you can drive in fairly deep water with this thing. Um, if you go in too deep, though, it'll reset you on the side, and it will cause damage. So it cost about a quarter of the health bar in damage. So you want to try to avoid doing that if you can. If you do too much damage to it, you can't use it. Um, it'll become unusable, it'll be on fire, and you're going to have to repair it before you can use it again, which we'll show you how to do that, actually. Easiest way to just driving the water over and over again. See how it's starting to generate smoke? Yeah, it's because it's pretty well damaged. Yeah, so see, it's not usable now. Um, you cannot access it. You can't get on it. It's on fire. Fire can't hurt you. Strictly cosmetic. So what happens here, if you want to use this again, um, all you got to do, go to your nearest outpost or tank of your choice. Go up to your cache, garage, click on the one, hit recover. There you go. Vehicle has arrived. There it is. Good as new. Super shiny. So that's the jade one. Let's take a look at the other colors. This is crimson. You can only have one out at a time, by the way. Crimson looks pretty good. It looks pretty slick, I think. I like that color. Um, if you have one out, you summon another one, it'll get rid of the first one. So you can't say, leave one here and here, and then summon another one, and it just doesn't work that way. So, um, you're going to have to deal with just having one at a time, which in single player doesn't matter, honestly. I don't, I can't think of a single situation where you would need one out in multiple locations. Um, it is usable in multiplayer. Let's get the charcoal next. Charcoal. The one I'm sure a lot of you are going to use, just because it's black, and black is cool. Yeah, buddy, look at that thing. Looks super cool. Uh, yeah, they were going to use it in multiplayer. Um, and a neat little thing with it, if you ask me. Um, if one person on the multiplayer server has the DLC for it, everybody on that server will be able to summon and use ATVs, whether they have the DLC or not, which is a really nice touch. Uh, everybody will be able to summon their own, and they cannot use another person's. So you won't be able to, to summon it and have some jerk run up and grab it, for example. Uh, but he can summon his own. And again, per person, only one is available to be out at a time. So you can have one, somebody else can have one, another person can have one, but the moment you summon another one, your first one is Kavitsky. Um So, do a crimson out. And... I'm going to showcase here probably the best feature of this. Um, 
that I think really takes the whole shebang, the whole package, and wraps it up nice and tightly. Uh, and that, that feature is um, that when you look at them from the front, he's got a smiling face. Oh, He's so happy for you to ride him over hill and dale. Hey, buddy. I'm going to call him Greg. Okay. He's so happy. So happy to do his job. So yeah, that's the ATVs, guys. Uh, all in all, I really like this DLC. I really like how it was put together. I think they did a great job with it, both on the, the artwork aspect of the modeling and textures, the mechanics of it. It just feels really, really good. Um, yeah, I can't recommend it enough. If you want more mobility around your map uh, and you get a couple bucks to spare, I say get it. You know, It's worth every penny to me. Um, let me know what you guys think. Definitely comment down below. Uh, and while you're here, if you'd like, leave a like or dislike. If you didn't like the video, I need to know that. You know, I just don't want just likes. I want likes and dislikes so I can tell what works and what doesn't. Uh, and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Um, I'm going to start working on more of the Hunter 101 videos because uh, I've gotten behind on those. Just real life, haven't had a lot of time to work on them, so I'm going to get back into it. Um, next video is going to be skill per skills and perks. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we will see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Say goodbye. Bye-bye.